I'm Laura no. Ingram. This is the Ingram Angle from Washington tonight. Thanks so much for being with us. Gruesome Newsom comes after Fox primetime hosts, including yours truly. I will respond, so stay tuned for that. But first, wave elections. That's the focus of tonight's angle. Now, it's not just the arrival of crisp fall weather. There's other big change in the air as well. And it could tell us a lot about how things will play out here in the November midterms. In Italy, exit polls show Europe's hard right has scored another stunning success at the ballot box. Uh, who, uh, who could think that in Sweden, uh, a par party with right-wing neo-fascist roots would now be dominant in, in, in Parliament? Uh, in France, that, that the right-wing parties would make such a strong showing under Marine Le Pen. It turns out that regular working people are growing increasingly fed up with establishment politicians, not just here, but abroad as well. So Italy's new prime minister, Giorgia Maloney, is a first, as she's the first woman ever to be elected prime minister there. Now, you think about it, our press is usually over the moon when the first is a liberal woman or a minority or gay, but not in this case. Italy has elected its first female prime minister. Note this, though, she is set to lead the most far-right government in that country since Mussolini. For the first time since World War II and the fall of Benito Mussolini, Italy will have a far-right government. The party with roots in neo-fascism. The fiery 45-year-old is comfortable with some of the hallmarks of Italian fascism, like this motto. God, fatherland, and family. Now, three things the media despise. God, fathers, and the nuclear family. I mean, this is just ridiculous. If any group today comes close to Mussolini and his brutal, infamous use of big business and big government together, it's the modern left. So nice try, kids. Of course, the reason this first in Italy does not count is because she doesn't play their globalist game. She refuses to. She hasn't been bought off. Instead, she calls out the failures of the majority parties and refuses to submit to their woke crusade against national identity and national culture. This was Maloney back in 2019. Why is the family an enemy? Why is the family so frightening? Because it defines us. Because it defines our identity. And so they attack national identity. They attack religious identity. They attack gender identity. They attack family identity. I can't define myself as Italian, Christian, woman, mother. I must be citizen X, gender X, parent one, parent two. I must be a number. Because when I am only a number, when I no longer have an identity or roots, then I will be the perfect slave at the mercy of financial speculators, the perfect consumer. Well, I suggest that you watch her entire speech. It is fantastic. I'm going to post it tonight on lauraingram.com. Now, the fact is Europe is facing a largely self-inflicted energy crisis this winter. It's going to be horrific, although it's easier just to blame Putin, of course. And Europe has struggled with a stampede of migrants from the Middle East and North Africa. And remember, this was forced on them by the EU years ago, especially in Sweden. The burden on social services, schools, and law enforcement there has been nightmarish. Now, crimes unlike anything the police have reported before in Sweden, including bombings, have become commonplace. These humiliation crimes, they have increased the last years. We also call it domination violence, where mm. a young person can be urinated at, at gunpoint, uh, tortured for hours, uh, just because uh, he's a Swede. And there is such resentment among some people. Now, this has overwhelmed the once very placid country. So how can anyone blame the Swedish people for finally voting to try to stop this madness? To not do so would be insane, something of a national death wish. And as the passage of Brexit was a bellwether in 2016 for Trump, could the recent populist victories across Europe predict similar GOP midterm successes? Well, the grim faces on the faux intellectual class seems to indicate yes. The, the victory of a, a party that has its roots in 
Italian fascism, plain, plain and simple, is concerning to everybody. Uh, it accompanies, as you said, this move in Europe. There is this populist rage that's sweeping across Europe, much as it swept across America in the, in the uh, 2016 election. There's no curiosity, no effort whatsoever at real reporting here. So those people who are serenely tucked away in their safe enclaves of their own, they simply dismiss these developments out of hand. Their analysis whiffs of a cursory Wikipedia search. It's lazy. The same dy dynamic is playing out there. Well, populist candidates and the America First policies that worked under Trump were and are roundly ridiculed and resisted without really any substantive argument by those same people. Yet there's literally almost nothing, when you look at it, nothing the bipartisan establishment, and especially now the Democrats, nothing they've touched that they haven't screwed up. The energy sector, now we're all facing these skyrocketing energy prices just in time for the great freeze here in the United States and in Europe. Of course, foreign affairs. They threw Russia into the arms of China with their idiotic handling of Ukraine. And then, of course, the climate change obsession. Trillions borrowed, trillions printed, and eventually will be spent on green Marxist policies that'll just rob us of our freedom and our prosperity. Yeah, we're all watching the financial markets down, down, down. All of this is dragging us into a global recession. You know, the past few years have strained and tested our transatlantic relationship. But the United States is determined, determined to re-engage with Europe to consult with you, to earn back our position of trusted leadership. Well, yeah, the European elites, they loathe Trump and his America First policies, and they were thrilled to hold, hold, hear those kinds of words from Biden when he won. But how are things feeling now, boys and girls? But being a radical globalist means never having to say you're sorry, or frankly, never having to change your mind about anything. Not for foreign policy disasters like the Afghanistan pullout, or on domestic policy with the COVID school closures. Still feel comfortable with the way that school districts, even you know, in your home state, handled the pandemic? I think we were under unprecedented times at that point where people really were struggling to figure out what was the best thing to do to make sure that their kids, their families, their children were safe. Remember, people were dying. I didn't even recognize Patty Murray. She's going to be defeated by Tiffany Smiley, by the way, in Washington state. So, look, with listening to Patty Murray, she can't offend her paymaster, the teachers' unions. Even when the teachers' unions cruelly sacrificed our children's learning for their own convenience and their own power. So there's only so long, even the bluest of bluest states, like Washington State, Oregon, even New England, where law-abiding Americans are going to tolerate ghoulish scenes like this. <laughs> Look, when you aren't safe, you aren't free. But again, the party in power doesn't believe it bears any responsibility. So here's the reality. The press can try to keep spinning away this populist awakening happening here and in Europe, but it's not going to help them. The establishment here, like over there, it's out of ideas. They can't fix the economy. They can't stop crime. They can't see the nuclear danger in Ukraine. They can't or won't stop the border invasion. And Americans don't like losers. And over time, they will turn to officials who can actually deliver positive results. The future, I think, belongs to places like Texas, Florida, Virginia, Tennessee, Iowa, and other parts of America where state governments are actually working to improve the lives of their people. What a novel concept. So the question every American has to ask is this. Do you want to be on the winning side? Or do you want to go down with the sour pusses like Liz Cheney and Nancy Pelosi? Do you want to feel safe again? Or do you want to worry about crime? Do you want to make money? Or do you want to watch your 401k disappear? There's a wave coming. And it's never too late to take up surfing. And that's the angle.
Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.